In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion, which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. Finally, whether you are citizens of America or citizens of the world, ask of us here the same high standards of strength and sacrifice which we ask of you. With a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history the final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking his blessing and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. On March 6, 1975, entranced Americans were glued to their television sets to watch the first mass public showing of the infamous Sapruder film that depicted the assassination of President John F. Kennedy on November 22, 1963. The 8mm film is by far the most complete and definitive of the photographic records of the assassination, and it is in color. Obviously, the Secret Service was eager to get their hands on any film of the event and did so, having three prints made, returning one to Abraham Zapruder, a Russian-born Jewish tailor who had filmed the murder on his personal home movie camera. Although the public did not see the moving pictures until a limited showing was held in Chicago in 1970 on the appropriately named Underground News, a late-night show hosted by Chuck Collins, still photos of the film had been published in major magazines such as Life and Paris Match within weeks of the event. The nation, however, only got its first viewing on network television on March 6, 1975, on the late-night show Good Night America, hosted by Geraldo Rivera, along with Dick Gregory and Robert Grodin. Many citizens were shocked and outraged that such a graphic and sad event was shown on national television, and empathized with the Kennedy family about having the horrible death of their loved one paraded around for all to see. The Zapruder film is often referred to as the most analyzed film in history, and it almost assuredly is, likely followed by the Gimlin-Patterson Bigfoot film. Studied by seemingly everyone under the sun, interpretations of what it shows also vary from expert to soi disant expert. To some, the film backs up the government assertion that Lee Harvey Oswald shot the president from behind as he hid in the Texas School Book Depository. 
To others, the fatal shot to Kennedy's head that blew chunks of skull and brain onto the trunk of the convertible limousine proved that shot came from a second shooter who was positioned in the front. Recreations on computers and using real guns, limousines, and mannequins purport to support different conclusions. Until the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks, the JFK murder was in a league of its own as far as conspiracy theories go, and the subject is still debated hotly to this day. The belief that the U.S. government is still, after so many years, keeping secret vital parts of the investigations of the assassinations of JFK, his brother Robert, and Martin Luther King only fuels the conspiracy fires. As a question for my students, what do you think? Did Oswald act alone? If not, who else was involved and why? Russians? Cubans? The Mafia? Other U.S. politicians? All supposedly had the motive and means. Please let us know in the comments section below this video. If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines and become one of our patrons. Your viewership is much appreciated.